Hello friends, myself Dr. Sonal Chhabra and today we are going to discuss on the issues of access and retention specifically with reference to children with special needs. We all are aware that education holds a very important place in lives of all the individuals and the government of India, the constitution of India has been sensitive to this aspect. As per the constitution of India, the government is committed to provide free and compulsory education to all the children in the age group of 6 to 14 years. However, equity is still an important issue in school education even after 70 years of independence. So we need to really think about these factors that why does equity is not happening in the government sector in school education. Government has made a lot of efforts in the similar direction. There have been a large number of primary schools which have been opened throughout the country. Schemes like free instructional material, midday meal, distribution of school uniforms, assistance to girls from tribal areas. There have been programs like DPEP, but still we haven't been able to achieve the right target. All these efforts which have been happening since independence were continued on a large scale under the Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. Even with Sarv Shiksha Abhyan happening, we had a section of children who were still marginalized, who are still aloof from the section of education. These marginalized children include the urban deprived children, the working children, the geographically remote located children, the minority children, the children from scheduled caste, children belonging to the scheduled tribes, children with special needs. In today's session, we are going to talk specifically about children with special needs as in why they have been marginalized, why they have not been getting the appropriate education and what kind of efforts the government has been making for ensuring that all these children reach to the school and get the desired education. Let us first understand why children with special needs have often been marginalized. The number one reason is on account of their disability. Disability becomes the most important factor when it comes to marginalization of these children in getting the right education. A certain lack of awareness has been felt on the part of the parents and the community about the potential of these children. It is felt that these children can't do much, they can't learn much. So the society, the parents, the community, they have not been investing in their education also. Thirdly, there are apprehensions on the part of the teachers also. As teachers, we are generally accustomed to normal children or the regular children who are coming to the school. But we need to get accustomed that these children can also study, they can also receive education, maybe with certain kind of modifications. The fourth important factor which has led to the marginalization of children with special needs is the societal attitude of sympathy. We do not look at these children with an attitude of empathy. We are looking at these children with an attitude of sympathy. Now when it, it comes to sympathy, then it's a feeling of pitiness which is associated with these children. Another factor which contributes to the same is lack of understanding and knowledge about the causes, the implications of the special conditions of children with special needs. There is a certain kind of stigma which is attached to being a child with special need. Then there are other factors like unconducive school environment. The school environment is not conducive. The children make fun of these children. Then the classroom support and the learning resources and other kind of facilities are not equipped enough or are not able enough or are not welcoming enough to welcome the children with special needs into the normal classrooms. There have been different estimates and surveys which have shown that more than almost one third of out of the school children are children with special needs. Now that's a good figure, that's a huge amount of figure that almost one third of the school children are children, one third of the school children who are out of school are children with special needs. Now Sarv Shiksha Abhyan which I've referred to the earlier uh, slides, SSA aims to ensure that every child with special needs irrespective of the category irrespective of the degree of disability is provided meaningful and quality education. Now just having an aim is not enough. So certain things need to be done in that direction. SSA has adopted a zero rejection policy. This means that no child having special needs should be deprived of the right to education. Coming down to Sarv Shiksha Abhyan and let us now discuss what are the specific considerations which have been made in the framework of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan with reference to children with special needs? 
SSA framework provides that a child with special needs should be taught in an environment which is best suited to his or her learning needs. So, if we draw implications from this framework, we need to understand that the environment needs to adapt to the needs of the child and not the child needs to adapt to the environment. We need to understand that when it comes to children with special needs, we need to really remember that it is the child which is first and the disability comes later on or the special needs come later on. Different kind of provisions which have been mentioned in Sarv Shiksha Abhyan are may include special schools, alternative innovative education or even home based education. So, if we go through these considerations or we go through these options which are available in the Sarv Shiksha Abhyan, they are specifically mentioning that fact that the curriculum is going to adapt to the child. The school education is going to adapt to the child. So, if the child cannot come to the school, the school is going to move or the education is going to move to the home. So, there is going to be home based education also because we know that there are number of degrees, there is a huge range in the degree of disability which the child may be facing. Now, specific requirements with respect to children with special needs, there is need, a, need of resource support, special teacher training, mobility aid, appliances etc. Sarv Shiksha Abhyan talks about all these things and Sarv Shiksha Abhyan makes efforts in these direction that all these things are being catered to, maybe with some kind of government support and at times there may be support of the non-government sector also. Now, there are different other possible efforts which at times need to be made in this direction or which are may be made in the direction, but they need to be strengthened in the same direction. So, the special facilities which are needed is community awareness, capacity building of village education committee, the in-service teacher training, making the school premises accessible and disabled friendly. Now, let's just understand what these factors are aiming at. Community awareness, why is it needed? Because there is a lack of awareness among the society what, about what these children can do. Then, village education committees can be strengthened and if they are strengthened, then definitely more number of children are going to come to the school. In-service teacher training, because with RT coming, now the uh, children with special needs are moving to the schools. Earlier, they were generally into the special schools. If they were into schools, they were generally into special schools. But with right to education coming in, with SSA coming in strengtheningly, so it needs to be done that the in-service teachers which are already into teaching, they should be prepared for dealing with or for working with children with special needs. Next, the school premises should be accessible. The school premises should be disabled friendly. So, if a child cannot walk up to the stairs, the school can make a simple effort of making a ramp so that it becomes accessible to the child. Amongst all these factors which comes another important factor is identification of children with special needs. This is a very important factor because till now what is happening is the regular children are coming to the school. The children, regular children are located in the society. But what happens with children with special needs is generally they are confined to homes because there is a certain kind of stigma which is attached to it. So, even the parents, even the families do not easily come out with that. So, identification of children with special needs becomes an important factor. Now, how it can be done through is number one, household surveys can be done. Then secondary, category wise count of the disabled children should be done. Category wise needs should be mentioned, number of children with visual impairment, number of children with mental impairment, number of children with locomotor impairment, all these would help. If there is a count available in this category or if, uh, if there is a count available according to these standards, it is going to be easier to plan the curriculum and other kinds of needs for the children. Then another thing which needs to be done is the functional assessment of the children. Now, when we are planning for children with special needs, one needs to understand that there needs to be a certain kind of assessment which needs to be done for the children. Until and unless we know where these children stand, until and unless we know the level of different um, capacities of these children, we won't be able to work out with them. We won't be able to plan things in a better manner for them. Then another effort which can be done for moving these children to school or for getting these children out of home to school is there can be special transport facilities which can be arranged. 
then another factor could be appointment of trained special education teachers already a lot of effort is being done in this direction there is a course which has been introduced lately is B.Ed Special Education. So teachers are being specifically trained as special education teachers and definitely they are an asset to any school or institution which the school has. Then there is a need of long term training of physiotherapist and occupational therapist. Now when it comes to children with special needs, it's not only the teachers who are working with the children. It's the family which is working with them, it's the special educators which are working with them and there is a section of paramedicals which are physiotherapists and occupational therapists. So a long term training of physiotherapists and occupational therapists is needed so as to work with children with special needs so as to provide them appropriate education. Then another possible effort could be using non-government organizations for arranging special schools or for arranging special schools for training, assessment, implementing innovative educational devices etc. Now this area needs to be really explored. Non-government sector has always been contributing to it, there is no doubt about it. But if they are more into the system, if they are involved more into the system, definitely the efforts could be better, definitely the results could be better. Then. Moving further, we need to really make an adaptation of curriculum to meet the needs of the children. Until and unless the curriculum is adapted to the needs of the children, the school won't be able to hold the children. Remember, we are talking about not just the access, we are talking about the retention of the children with special needs in the schools also. Just making them reach the school won't suffice the purpose. The purpose would be achieved only if these children are retained in the school, they are provided certain kind of education which suits their needs. So the curriculum needs to adapt itself to meet the needs of the children. If it's a child with visual impairment, maybe he won't be able to understand the geographical maps. So certain other things could be done to make him understand the similar concept. So these similar adaptations small adaptations but important adaptations definitely need to be made as per the needs of the child if it comes to physical activities maybe the child with visual impairment cannot do the similar physical activities which would be done by the uh, children of his own age group so there needs to be certain kind of modifications which can be made probably in the playground or probably in the classroom also which can help the child to get involved in the physical activities but with certain kind of adaptation so curriculum seems to be the key point where the children can be retained. All other kinds of facilities can boost that thing but curriculum is the center point around which it depends how much the children are going to retain in the school. Then another factor would be relaxation with respect to evaluation and examination. We need to really make certain kind of relaxations with respect to evaluation and examination system. We need to provide scribes to these children. We need to provide extra time for these children. There are different kinds of disability. A child may be suffering from learning disability. A child may be suffering from visual impairment. A child may be having hearing impairment. But we cannot mark all these children on the similar scale. Even with the normal children, we do talk about those kind of things that a single test cannot evaluate all the children in the same manner. You cannot compare a monkey and a rabbit on the speed of climbing the tree. Definitely the monkey is going to do it in a better manner. So we need to really make certain kind of changes. We need to make really certain kind of relaxations when it comes to evaluation and examination. Then comes another factor which talks about removing architectural barriers in existing schools. See we are talking about making the curriculum adaptive but we need to really make the school also adaptive to the needs of the child. So the simplest thing which can be done is making certain kind of architectural barriers, removing certain kind of architectural barriers which exist in the school. Like I earlier mentioned that we can make ramps instead of the staircases. So or probably we can have both of them, we would definitely need both of them because there would be certain children who would be able to climb the stairs but there would be certain children who would be needing the ramps. So these simple things are not just going to boost the confidence of the child, they are just not going to move him out of the shell of inabilities which he is experiencing or which he has been experiencing for long 
and also he is going to feel the school as his own place. Until and unless the child feels that the school has his own place, he is not coming to an external thing or he is not coming to a thing which he doesn't know, the child won't feel at home. So if these kind of architectural barriers are being removed, then definitely it's going to help in retenting the child to the, in the schools. Then another factor is involvement of parents, NGOs and village education committees. See, it's the society. Ultimately, it's the parents. Ultimately, it is the village education committees which can definitely help in improving the facilities which are being provided by the school for retenting the children with special needs. See, we need to move to the society, we need to make them stigma free, we need to make really the children with special needs stigma free, we need to create an awareness among the parents that these children can do, we can involve non-government organizations for the same and we can strengthen the village education committees for the same. If these kind of similar efforts are being made in this direction, definitely there cannot be any reasons why children with special needs won't retain in the school. So we need to remember that if we talk of access, if we talk of retention, we need to make changes in architecture, we need to involve the parents, we need to involve the community, we need to adapt the curriculum, we need to relax the examination system or the evaluation system, we need to use NGOs for training schools or for spe training special teachers for the same, we need to long, uh, indulge in the long term training of physiotherapist and occupational therapist we need to appoint special education teachers. Now, if we make efforts in all these directions, definitely the situation is going to improve and we are going to have more number of children with special needs in the schools and we will be able to give them the education which they need as per their needs. Having discussed what kind of possible efforts which can be made by the government, by the society for indulging into the education of children with special needs and for bringing them into the system of education. We all need to remember that the peer support is also another factor which is which may be a sublime factor but which becomes an essential factor when it comes to day to day interaction of the children in the schools. So a system of peer tutoring or a sensitivity among the students also needs to be developed so that the children do not feel out of place. See, ultimately, children with special needs are not going to, children with special needs or for that matter, any kind of children is not living with the teacher for the whole six hours which he's spending in the school. It's the friends, it's the classmates which he's spending time with. So, if these children are more sensitive to the needs of the child, if these children are more conscious of the needs of the child, then definitely the environment which the child is going to feel is going to be much better in the classroom. Once the environment is better, once the child feels more comfortable in the environment, once the child feels more happy about the environment which he is living in or which he is coming into in the school, then definitely the amount of input which he is going to put into education is definitely going to be more. So the learning outcomes are definitely going to be improved or definitely going to go up. These apprehensions which are there on the part of the teachers definitely need to be removed. Now, once the apprehensions of the teachers are removed, which can be done with certain kind of in-service training, which can be done with certain kind of interactive sessions with the teachers, the teachers will also feel more engaged and the teachers will also feel more equipped to handle to the needs of the children with special needs. The societal attitude definitely needs a workout. There is a lack of understanding and there is a lack of knowledge which is about about the potential of children with special needs among the general society. Now, if it, it is worked out, then again there are different kind of ways in which it can be worked out. The media can be definitely used in the same direction and all these efforts would definitely bring the children with special needs more into the system, give them access, give them retention and if they are going to contribute to the society in a more productive manner. Thank you students.